Hey guys, it's Morgan from Highland Cycles coming to you with another weekly schlag. We are back here at Highland Cycles in Montrose, Colorado, doing our weekly shop vlog. Um, if you guys are new here, please consider sticking around to the end of the video. Check it all out. If you like what you see, give us a subscribe, give us a thumbs up, tell a friend about uh, what we're doing here. We're trying to spread the gospel of two wheels because we think that dirt bikes make better people and we need more better people in this world. Uh, I got the uh, game changer up here because we are going to be going racing this weekend. So um, I have to say, I just wanted to let you guys in on something. Uh, when I first got this bike, drained the oil the first few times, it definitely seemed a little darker and gnarlier than I had hoped. I thought, oh boy, I hope something's not wrong. Hope there's not a lot of clutch wear or whatever. I can say now that on 133 or 134 hours in, at 15 hours, I think, this clutch or this transmission fluid looked great. Now, obviously, it's dirty, right? But you can still see the red in it, and there's other oil mixed in there. Um, but honestly, guys, it's just getting better. It seems like it's lasting longer and longer. Uh, I just shot a video uh, and selling a 120-90-18 Tusk Talon on here, talking about moose balls and care packs mooses and um, all sorts of stuff like that. So make sure you check that out when you get a chance. I think it's pretty good. So I got a lot of stuff to do. I got to push bikes out and then we'll get on to the first job. All right, guys, one more thing before we pull up another bike. I want to show you uh, Ben at First Rock Motorsports sent me some stuff to test, and these things are pretty cool. Uh, they're like little hair nets for your air filter. Uh, let me show you what they look like in the package. They come in a package, a whole bunch, 25 of them. And there we are, dustcovers.eu. Uh, and like that's the thing about First Rock Motorsports. They specialize in kind of funky European style stuff, which is big into the hard enduro. Uh, that's why we are on the S3 gear. That's a Euro company. And Ben does a really good job of uh, finding that stuff when a lot of other people don't carry it and he can ship them everywhere. But check these things out. So there's 25 in here. You pull one out. And then, like I said, it's just like a hairnet and it might just be a hairnet, honestly. <laughs> but uh, who cares? So you put that on over. Let's go see how it did on my bike. Uh, now, um, with the KTM style with these nubbins, I had to just like put a hole through it. So let me pull that out. So it's not a... Guys, this isn't like a quick race thing. Like you just yank it off like the filter skins. It's not set up like that. This is more for, um, you know, a trip or something like that. You put a little bit of oil on the actual hairnet. And I'd say that's not bad. Definitely would ride that again. Uh, this thing has probably three good rides on it with that on there. So I think it did pretty good. I'm super happy. Everything's nice and clean in there like always. So yeah, I think that did pretty well. I'd uh, definitely use these things again. All right, guys, next on the lift. It has been a while since we've worked on a vintage bike. We got an old XT350. Uh, we got carburetor stuff to do to it. The head valve cover might be leaking, but we're gonna focus on the carburetors first to make the thing run. Uh, this thing is weird. It has two carburetors. It's got one carburetor on this side. And then if we come to this side, it has another intake track, but it's got this thing on there. So it's like a vacuum. It's like a CV, just the CV part of a car. It's really weird. These things are super weird. So let's take it apart and show you guys what that's all about. All right, guys, we got the carburetors off. <laughs> so this is obviously the main carburetor. Works, it's all good, works with the, um, cables Let's see if I can show you so that opens up with the cable then this opens like a normal CV carbs so if you blow air through here it lifts up and then you can see there's a tie to the fuel here 
So this basically, this thing just holds gas. So it's, honestly, it's weird and it doesn't make any sense. I don't know why they ever did this because I guess it might be able to throw a little more fuel at it than just having a normal carburetor with a CV style. But honestly, it was just over complicated for the situation. That's why they didn't run for very long. That's why it's not still on motorcycles um, or anything even close to it. So no big deal. Uh, we're going to get it all taken care of. So I'm going to take it apart right now. Got the ultrasonic all heated up. I'm uh, going to dump it in there pull it back out, clean all the jets, make sure everything's good, put it back on here and see if we can't get this thing to run. So, All right, guys, so the next on my lift is this 03 RM125. And uh, super stoked. We uh, got it all jetted. Sorry, I didn't show you like the in-depth part of that. It's just another Makuni carburetor, <laughs> like on all the new KT and new Ur KTMs and CR125, CR250s, YZ125. Anyway, they're on a lot of bikes. Nothing super crazy except that it was pretty dirty uh, and then someone had used some sort of like uh, gasket maker silicone kind of stuff on the float bowl gasket. That didn't help that clog some stuff up because silicone and fuel or any petroleum product guys does not work. It melts, it goes everywhere. It's a terrible idea. If you have to seal up a carburetor, well just buy the right gasket. But if you're stuck and you got a race coming up or something like that, I get it. Like sometimes you gotta just go um you can use this stuff three bond uh 1184 it also known as yama bond honda bond whatever it will actually work but you have to use like super sparing it has to be the tiniest bead around the float bowl because if it touches too much gas it also will go places and do damage so you gotta be really careful i don't recommend it unless it's one of those situations where you just have to do it and that's part of what we do here on this channel guys is I understand that not everybody has time to wait for parts. Not everybody has time to um, like take all the time in the world to make sure it's perfect. Like I get it. Sometimes you have a race coming up or a big ride coming up and you got to get the thing going. Uh, that is one way to do it. Uh, but fortunately we bought a full carburetor kit for this bike and rebuilt the carb, put it through the ultrasonic. You can see it is the shiniest thing on the bike um, <laughs> and uh, new, uh, filter on the from the petcock to the carburetor so that's all good it runs really really well so let me share with you the jetting in case you got one of these things uh, it is a 430 main jet and a 30 pilot the needle stock needle just in the number two position this thing is crisp uh really good so stoked he's coming racing at the same place we're racing this weekend so i'm excited to see him out there uh hopefully he's not in my class and beats me on this thing <laughs> but uh, if he does, then I'll be, I guess it's a good thing no matter what, right? If I beat him, then yay me. Uh, if he beats me, then I guess I did a good job with the bike. So uh, we got old KAR over there. He is putting a piston in his bike before the race. So uh, that is my son's old uh, 2013 YZ250 that we got from Robbie Noyles, which he then sold to Colt and then got another bike from Robbie Noyles, a 16. Uh, so Colt is freshening up the top end on this, which is time. It's got, I don't know how many hours. What's that say on uh, hours? It says 99.7. So, so yeah, it's bad. That's probably pretty close, actually. So uh, probably about 100 hours on this thing. So Colt is learning. Um, he's never done a two-stroke top end before, have you? I've never worked on motorcycles. There we go. He's never worked. He's done car stuff, but he's never done motorcycle stuff. So he's down here it's late in the well. Not that late, 6.30, but it's going to be late um, before we're done and out of here. Uh, so, yeah, that's what's going on right now, guys. Uh, I'm going to put you down. I might bring you back in when we get into Colts and see what's going on. Um, yeah, stay tuned. All right, guys, we got the cylinder off, got the piston out. You can definitely see it's been blowing by, a little bit of carbon buildup, but it looks pretty good. At about 100 hours, it looks good, but it's definitely time. So now I'm going to show you guys how we check to see how much we need, like how badly we needed to do it. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but we're gonna show you what the end gap looks like. We'll just put this in here. Oh yeah, it needed to be done. I'll show you guys why I'm saying that in just a second. So you wanna get that flat. So take your piston like that. 
Now, it's not bad. It's not as bad as uh, Travis from every single Sunday. Um, but that gap that's right there, let's see if you guys can see that. I don't know. There we go. So you guys are seeing a big gap right there because that's like where the pin goes. But at the top of that, there's a gap. And this one should be about, let's see, one, two, probably about nine thousandths, eight to nine thousandths is what I like on a YZ250. Uh, let me grab my feeler gauges and we'll see what that actually is. The number of these that I've looked at, my guess is this is somewhere around, I bet it's, let's try 20. I have a feeling 20 would go. Yep. That's actually right, almost right on the money. I hit it on the way out there, but like, you can just feel it dragging on the sides. So, there we go. 20 thousandths went out to be eight. So, Colt, grab, a, grab your other rings, your new yeah, rings. New so brand new vertex ring. Mm, nice and flat. <laughs> oh yeah, that is a lot closer together. Uh, let's try 20. There's no way that's gonna fit. Someone asked me earlier, like did my finger thing on one of the other ones. Th on most humans, this is about an inch. And you want about three thousandths of clearance uh, in in gap, three thousandths of in gap per inch. And so this is a YZ250. It's just a fuzz over two inches. So that's six six thousandths plus a little bit. So I come in. I call it eight. Somewhere in there. Um, and honestly, I haven't had to grind a ring. Oh yeah, look at that. Eight does just right, and the nine was a little on the tight side, so that's exactly what we're looking for. Uh, guys, if you want to, so I'm looking in the bore of this thing, it looks perfect, right? I don't need to mic everything and make sure it's all good. Um, but uh, if you wanted to check everything, what you do is you move that ring down the cylinder and back up the cylinder and check it um, if you don't have a dial bore gauge, um, or excuse me, a well, you know what I mean. The dial bore gauge would work, but then also, um, you know, you could do, use the micrometer things. What do they call those little T deals that spread out? To, and you can mic it and figure out exactly if there's any egg shape out around or whatever. But the thing with Nicosil cylinders is that the Nicosil is so thin, it's super, super crazy tough, but it's so thin that if it's worn, it's going to be through the Nicosil, basically. Um, and I don't know, so maybe someone could comment below what the thickness of Nicosil is. It's crazy, crazy thin. So if it looks good, there's no scratch in the Nicosil, there's no um, wear through to the aluminum, then you don't really need to check like egg shape or out around. This is not like an old steel cylinder. It's just not like that anymore. So um, yeah, I feel really good about that. We're going to clean it up a bunch. We're going to splash a hone through it and cue all the people, don't hone it, oh my God. Uh, <laughs> we're going to do that. We're going to clean it up really good. Uh, and then we're gonna go back together with it and this thing's gonna run awesome All right guys next on the lift is this uh, 250f SXF. Yeah SXF 250 anyway KTM four-stroke and it has a problem right there I don't know if you guys can really see it on the camera, but that bolt is stripped on the outside uh, it's a relatively common thing to have happen because <sighs> People get in a hurry and they they'll put a 12 point socket on there and it's kind of the they maybe you know reefed it down a little tight the first time and they're trying to get it off and anyway it happens. I think I have the solution. Hopefully I can get this in here. Let me show you what I got. So these sockets are really cool because they have like reverse teeth thing. Anyway, they bite in and bust off. So um, I hope I can get that in there. Let's see if we can. We got the. There's the 13. I don't know. Ah, dang, it won't quite fit. So, we gotta figure out another way. All right, I'm going to grab a 6.13, because I have one. 
and see if I can beat it on there. Uh, hopefully it's not too torn up, but let's see. So it's on there. Obviously it's pretty jacked up. All right guys, now we're gonna heat it up. I'm gonna take this off so that this doesn't get hot. I'm gonna heat the cases up. Try not to heat the bolt itself because I want the case to grow and the bolt not to grow. Um, and they are different metals because the case is aluminum bolt steel. So hopefully it'll boop, grow a little bit. Now, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a pry bar so I can push that tight as I try to break it loose. Pry bar, get it in there, push, and Ha-ha! We got her! <laughs> Stoked. All right, now I need a drain pan. There we go, guys. It's out. I have a new one. I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to use. Uh, it's actually one of the super high magnetism ones from uh, Ben Nicholson up at First Track Motorsports. It's got a much stronger magnet, so hopefully if anything does come loose, it catches it and pulls it out of the way so it doesn't tear up more stuff. So. Uh, yeah, let me go grab that here in a second. All right, there we go, guys. This is from First Track. I think Mitigator maybe makes it. I'm not sure, honestly, but it's on our page. If you go to firsttrackmoto.com slash Highlands Cycles, link in the description, you can get one of these. Uh, pretty cool, actually. And they also have an O-ring on it and a crush washer, so kind of like belt and suspenders to keep the thing from leaking. Um, they're really, really strong, uh, high high-end um machined part with a really really strong magnet all right got that fixed need to put oil back in the motor but the other thing that is going on with this bike is no clutchy um so we uh yeah i'm not sure what's going on there we're gonna hopefully just bleed it um hopefully it's just low on fluid um one thing that can happen to these hydraulic systems is the seal here can leak and push uh, fluid into the motor. It doesn't hurt anything in the motor, uh, but it does cause this issue. So uh, yeah, I have this new cool tool. I learned from Zach Sheets, this giant syringe. Um, <laughs> I'm super excited about it uh, because the ones that we usually use are like just medical ones and they work for a while, but then they fail. But this thing is made for brake fluid and stuff. The one thing I got to figure out is this connection, because this is really um, this PTFE stuff, and it's like stiff. And I think it might go on. Yeah, it'll go on okay, uh, but it's definitely going to wear out. I'm going to see if I can rig some sort of softer tube up on this. Like, I'm not going to take this off. I want to hook something else to it. So let me see what we can find. All right, guys, I found some eighth inch uh, carb line. Uh, it won't last forever with brake fluid on it, but that's okay because it's super easy to replace. You just pull it out and cut another one, put it in. I think that's gonna work. Let's see if it'll hook up onto this bleeder. It may not. Uh, yeah, so that might not work. That's okay. I think. All right, for this one, we're just gonna use it like that because it does fit over that. So stay tuned to the channel, guys. <laughs> if we come up with a better solution, we'll uh, do it. So let's go get some brake fluid in this thing, crack that, we're gonna push it up. All right, guys, it's bone dry, like bone, bone dry. I'm gonna see if I have a rebuild kit for this uh, sleeve solder. All right, guys, so the reservoir on the master cylinder is completely dry like all the way all the way dry so that means to me that something's going on here um these things they hold up pretty well this is an 18 i think it's got a fair amount of hours on it. it's definitely been beat on um, but they you know they fail it's just part of the deal so let me show you guys one second i have a rebuild kit here from moose i'm gonna take this there we go That pops the piston out. Actually looks okay, but we're still not taking any chances. A little spring in there you don't want to lose. 
cool thing about these kits is it comes with a whole piston and a spring and everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I got to get this last little O-ring off of there. Uh, I'm going to dump it in our ultrasonic. Get it really, really clean. Then I'll show you how we go back together. All right. Got the slave cylinder nice and clean. Now, we've got our new piston, come new ball bearing, new seal. It's really a nice setup. Also, new spring. So drop that spring in there. Heat up the rubber, and it'll just go away when you get a little brake fluid on it. There's not much in there anyway. Get that down over there. Just be careful not to mess it up. It's a little bit of a tight fit. But there we go. All right, now we're just going to go bolt it back on, and then I'll show you how we bleed it. All right, guys, got it all bolted back up. It even comes with new bolts, which is nice. New crush washers. It's all on there nice and tight. Uh, now, here's the deal. When you're bleeding one of these things, you got to make sure the lever is not touching or not putting any pressure on the piston. This one's a little too far, <laughs> but uh, it's definitely not touching it. So if it's putting any pressure on there at all, a lot of times it won't bleed. So let's get our crazy mighty back. You guys that have been watching the channel for a while are probably wondering why I'm not using the Mo tool. It's because I'm out right now, <laughs> and this is just fine, um, especially for clutch. It doesn't get nearly as hot as the brakes. So I'm gonna suck some up just a little bit. Then we're gonna go over and put this on. It's got our eight mil wrench. Mm. There we go. Let the air bubbles go up. Break this loose. Ooh, that's actually smaller than an eight. Weirdly, I think it's a seven. Yep, that doesn't make any sense. Nice thing about this syringe, you can see everything. You can see the bubbles getting out of the way. I'm gonna crack this and we're gonna force fluid in while staying out of the way of that because we're probably gonna overfill it. That little baffle that's in there, it's nice for when the bike, when everything is full and it's happy. The problem is if you get air in that baffle, it's hard. It won't, like a lot of times it won't come out. Uh, and so it keeps a bubble of air over the inlet, <laughs> which is kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, usually that goes away when you push it up from the bottom, uh, but it didn't this time. So now we're gonna push a little bit more. Oh, there's some. Oh, there we go. It's starting to come around now, so. I'm going to keep doing this. Yeah. All right, guys. So next on the lift is this 150 SX. Uh, if you guys don't know, KTM had a bit of a problem in 22 with the 150s and 125s. Uh, I had a 21 125 XC. It was absolutely brilliant. Zero problems. High revving. Beat on that thing. Absolutely crushed that thing for a year. And it did great. No problems at all. In 22, they changed manufacturers of the crankshaft. I don't know why thought that KTM would have done that themselves, but I guess not, or maybe they used to, then they didn't. But when they changed, they ended up having uh, lots of problems. Uh, people were blowing up crankshafts when they'd over rev them. And KTM, in their infinite wisdom, instead of recalling them, putting better cranks in them, they sent out, or I don't know, sent out a reflash, but whatever, got you a new ECU tune that had a rev limiter on it. And a rev limiter for a 125 is about the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. So that was their fix. It was a dumb fix. It's not that it's a Band-Aid. Um, so anyway, terrible decision on KTM's part. So um, this gentleman, instead of doing that ECU, he wants the thing to rev like it's supposed to rev. We are taking it apart, taking the crank out of it. We're gonna send it to Crankworks down in Arizona. And they are the guys who build like the pro cranks, like the 
the, what our pro circuits cranks, all that stuff gets done in Arizona uh, crank work. So we're going to be taking that out, send it to them, get them to build a really, really wicked um, bottom end for this thing. And then he is getting some super high zoot ported cylinder for it. We're going to put it all back together. So I'm going to yank this thing apart and we'll show you what the inside of a 150 SX looks like. It's a tiny little motor. All right, guys, we've got the motor uh, almost all apart. We've got the whole right side off. Everything in here, guys, is just like a big bike, only shrunk. <laughs> Except for the kickstart spindle. That's big and burly. That's kind of a cool system right there. If you can see uh, this plate to cover that up so it doesn't, like, come out and hang on things. I could, because I've seen these um, where they've had problems before and they'll mess up gears and stuff not necessarily on ktms but just in bikes in general so that's a pretty cool design um classic normal shift star and everything from ktm but yeah really cool you can see where they have the bosses so you could put an electric start i don't think you can add it to this bike <clears throat> per se although you, yeah because the cases aren't drilled and tapped but uh these are the same cases that they use for the xc with the button so you know they just will drill and tap that knock that hole out whatever be good to go so i guess if a guy wanted to you could maybe add it to this bike i'm not sure um it would be monumental and no real reason since you could just buy the xc um <laughs> uh so yeah we got that all apart now we're going to uh, flip it over let's take a look at the other side and uh so this has the weird situation of you cannot replace this left seal without splitting the cases. And literally only the SXs have this. I don't know why they do it. I don't know if it's because they're higher revving and they want that captured. I'm not sure, but it's really dumb. And you can't replace that because uh, like YZs, which are motocross bikes, don't have this. And lots of other don't have this. Um, so I don't know why it does this. But I know the 250 does it too. So um not my favorite design, but uh, well, at least we're taking it apart, so we'll replace it, put a new one in. Um, but yeah, I don't get it. I mean, you can see here, that's where all the start gear and stuff would go on this. So I guess with some machining and stuff like that, you could put an e-start on this. Uh, now what we're gonna do is take this um, counter shaft sprocket off. We're gonna take all these bolts off and we're gonna split the cases and take a look inside. Guys, this is a difference <laughs> about a KTM versus like, for instance, a Yamaha. Uh, YZs, you gotta use a case splitter to get these things apart. Um, these ones just slide apart if you're careful. Oh. Things like this fall out, you gotta make sure they get back to where they're going. Everything's nice and shiny and happy. Bearings look great. I'm sure we're going to put all brand new ones in it, though. There's our crank. Everything looks great, but I guess it's uh, this bearing or the rod is what gives up on these things, so... We're going to get Crankworks to make us a really, really nice one. All right, guys, that's the end of the week, the end of the schlog. <clears throat> we are going racing in Grand Junction with Weeby Racing this weekend. Super excited about that. So I got to get out of here, get down to the race, and go have a ton of fun. I love you guys. I hope you get out and spread the gospel of two wheels. And I desperately hope that what we're doing here at Highland Cycles is inspiring you guys to work on, but more importantly, get out and ride your dirt bikes! <laughs>